we're right here live at the Hit the Switches Hello Stranger show where the Sinceres, the uh, Sacred Souls, as well as Zillow's Yesterdays were here. A lot of great people performing. It's a historic night in music. And we got the Sinceres right here. We got Joey Cunyos and we have Brian. Uh, why don't you guys introduce yourselves, everybody. Step up to the mic. I am Paco. <laughs> Next. This guy's coming from Francisco. Fra Frankie, but this is... Chris Manjares. Brian Ponce. Brian Ponce. Stevie Fontaine. Stevie, what instrument do you play? Saxophone. Saxophone. Guitar, singer, and of course the great Joey. The Foo. Uh, Joey Quinones, <laughs> what's up everybody? All right, and the Sinceres and the Altons, uh, great music coming out of Los. These guys are from East LA. They're from Maywood, right? California. Uh, Joey, tell me about this movement that's coming out. That it's almost like a resurrection of what Richie Valens was doing in the beginning. But uh, man, I'm, I know you've been heard. You heard that before. But tell us about this movement coming out of LA. You know, it's just something that kind of you know it's always been a part of our lives. I feel, especially as musicians growing up in LA, it's, we all come from the punk rock kind of background. You know, we all started going to the punk rock gigs and stuff. Eventually, you know, you run out of records to buy and CDs, so you start digging in your parents' collection. And you know, for me, like my my, my dad's been in a car clubs in 71 so it's been like you know just a natural thing for me I used to go to the car clubs all the time on the weekends even if I didn't want to go you know so I'd be there so all the songs that people love and are just timeless tunes are now standards for us and it's just you know a part of us are just trying to keep it alive and trying to keep it going for the next generation you know? well Joey tell me if this is true I heard in the very beginning that when you were staying at your dad's you had that mattress yeah. and you used to stand it up and then you made that room into your studio right yeah I did this guy was there this guy was there we did a record out there called what's his name? Baco. Hey, what's the first name that we first thought of before these sincere's? What was it? You gotta tell me. The Pretenders. <laughs> it was Paco and the Pretenders, you remember? You were like, uh, next. <laughs> <laughs> really Francisco Flores were here. The uh, Los Hermanos Flores. I love the this record. Guy. Yeah, you've been knowing each other for a long time. Eleven years ago, we used to have a band called JQ in the Review. We used to play in East LA. Nobody gave a shit. It's gone, to this day, it doesn't matter. What we love is being able to play in front of people, getting our message across. So this is your dream. Did you ever dream it would be like this? I don't know if it's my dream. It's definitely my passion. It's my passion. How about you, Joey? This is my dream, my passion, my life, and my everything, really. It really is. You know, I got a family, but you know, my music has, has always been a part of me and my this family. Is my family. This is my family. Now, we're all family, we're all friends, we're all either related at one point, we all grown up together, but you know, it's really just about being, <laughs> being able to play music for everybody, really. Well, you write, produce, uh, you, we see in a video where you play all the instruments. Um, you know, tell me about your writing technique. Uh, what do you where do you get your inspiration from? Is it love, life? Life experiences, for sure. A lot of the tunes that, uh, you know, I write personally, it comes from a place that I've experienced in the past or, you know, am experiencing. So it's, it comes out, it translates as honest or what you may call it. But it's definitely something that's been a part of my life. But I always try to um, appreciate being able to write in a third person point of view or tell a story in another person's perspective. So. I'm always experimenting with stuff, and I you know, just love writing. You know. Now the big part of the soul, uh, so, what do you call it, soldies call sound, it the soldies sound. I didn't um, make it up. <laughs> you didn't make it up. It's, that's the coin term. The saxophone play over here. So a uh, big part of the music, right? It's some, I love Tower Power. I love that sound. But how important are the horns to this sound that's coming out now? I mean, uh, with music that you're hearing today, everything is done on a computer and we're losing the human element to music and I think people playing a horn gives it more expression, gives it more color and I think it you, you could hear it in the sound that we have and the crowd really responds to it well as well. I love it. I mean, horns are just so familiar and so connecting, you know, as an audience member. I think that's, you know, for me, I've always grabbed, I've always been a horn player too, and, you know, having these guys on board has just been such a pleasure because they, they're such a, a, a magnet to people's, not just attention, like, you know, not like it's a trick or anything, like a gimmick, but it's, you know, it's something that you want to pay attention to when you see a horn section up there. You know, you, you want to, you want to hear the sound, you want to hear what they can deliver, and these guys do it great all the time. Now, you're a multi-instrumentalist. Uh, how do you know how to play guitar, man, drums, and uh, horns, and all that? How did you pick that up in school? Mostly in school, yeah, the marching band. I've been a band geek most of my life, you know, during middle school and high school. I guess the beginning of my life, I guess. But 
Um, you know, it's just you know, I've always been the guy who to fill in some spots and some holes. So you know, whenever there was a dropout or anything, a hole missing, I would step in and kind of fill that spot. So I'm grateful for those opportunities because they made me the musician I am. Yeah. Now I mentioned Richie Valens. Who are some of the other people that inspired you to do music? Uh, James Brown, one of them. James Brown's a big one. What do you think? Uh, Otis Redding. Oh man, there's a bunch of them. You know, I, I, for me, before I got into soul music, as I've always been into soul music, but reggae music, early reggae, 1960s, has been a big thing. So John Holt, Paragons, Alton Ellis, those singers are just the singers that I grew up to. And, you know, that's how we got into soul, because they were listening to the guys in the, in, coming from the code like it's, yeah, all from the States, you know? So the uh, single that you have, Seems Like, uh, tell me a little bit about that, man. Seems Like uh, is an old song we used to play in bars about like six, <laughs> seven years ago. Hey, I didn't know you were allowed in bars. You were probably, what, underage? Chill, 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 chill. <laughs> no, no, it's a song we used to play at bars all the time. It's just one of the set list tunes that we had. You know, eventually, you know, we did a video for it, for the recordium, and it got semi kind of viral, got passed around a lot. And that became like our calling card. People knew us over there. It seems like, you know, that was our song, to the point that before his What's His Name came out. So it was kind of the song that introduced us to the LA public and, the, you know, the crowd, the Soldies crowd, if you want to call it, and the record labels. They were, that's the one that kind of got their attention. And we were fortunate enough to put to release that song out with uh, Penrose Records with Gabe Roth. Here's the Cholo interpretation of uh, Tell Me His Name. Tell Me His Name, is it? Um, what's up, babe? Tell me his name, eh? Um, so, what do you hope to achieve with this band, man? What's the What's the goal, man? Um, I mean, travel the world, you know. Travel, go, go places that we've never thought about going. Play places, meet people we never dreamed about meeting, you know. And, and just get everybody to be able to take care of themselves and their families, to be most and foremost, you know. Well, eat your heart out, Rasa. This is the man right here, Joey Quinones, leading this leading this movement that's uh, going on, and people are. Uh, responding and and the cultura that the chicano movement the the low rider i mean you're bringing it all back man I and mean, we're very proud of you the latino community poetry our power everything i do we're very proud of what you're doing man and we want to hear more so um you have any shout outs man anybody out there listening watching you and loving your music just everybody who's shared the music everybody who's shared the message and the band all of our friends everybody who went to our first show and it was two people at a bar you know of course all our family my girl my baby girl bianca and April Rose, love you guys, my family. And a shout out? Sure. All our families, uh, all our families that we had to miss birthday parties or weddings or anything else that we had to miss because we had gigs. Thank you for taking our, that sacrifice for us, for us to do what we want to do. You did more than what you had to. Thank you very much. Now, Joey, can they just uh, put in their search engine the, the Sincere's? Uh, to find out more, do you have a website as well? Yeah, we have a, you can search us on any search engine, The Sinceres, double E, S-I-N-S-E-E-R-S, The Sinceres, uh, we're also on Instagram, we have a Twitter, you know, we have a TikTok, you know, <laughs> but uh, all the social media outlets are on there, you know, but just keep a look out and we'll have our tour dates and our merchandise posted up soon. Yeah. The Sin Sears, that's S-I-N, so you guys sin a little bit? Look. <laughs> All right, well, much success, fellas, and uh, we love you, Thank and uh, we'll see you soon. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, the Sin Sears.